Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 299 main event, uh, Sean O'Malley, Cheeto Vera 2. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we see a longer fight here. I'm, so, I'm hoping we see this play out a little bit more. I felt like it was just kind of starting to settle in uh, in the last fight when uh, Sean O'Malley injured his ankle. And um, yeah, we, we'll see how this plays out because obviously, you know, it was a little while ago as well and this has been brewing for a minute the, between these two. They've been they've, they've been kind of, I mean, you know, we we, we knew they were going to cross paths again, especially because the last fight was, although you know, although Marlon takes the win by TKO, um, and he did, you know, he landed some really really good shots when they hit the floor, especially a couple of elbows that, uh, you know, they 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 put Sean O'Malley out for a second. Um, the ankle injury was clearly something that that played into that result and. O'Malley looks different now. You know, he he looks a lot slicker. He's moving well. He 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 seems to. Although there may still be a vulnerability there that can be exploited, I think it would require Cheeto to invest in low kicks to 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 you know to create that damage or at least to refresh any kind of injury or potential paranoia associated with leg injuries. Um, like I went back and watched uh, Poirier versus McGregor that that trilogy t earlier today, and the first kick that Poirier lands in their third fight, you could see how you could see how it affected McGregor. And I don't know whether it was it was straight away a physiological thing, like ah damn that that first kick was really painful, or whether it was ah that reminds me of that last fight. Let me just let me just switch to orthodox for a second. You know what I mean? It's like you, you don't know what what kind of triggers there are in Sean O'Malley's mind where Cheeto can potentially bully him by chipping away a, a lead leg, even with it out without it doing damage immediately. It might start distracting Sean O'Malley, changing the way that he moves, changing decisions that he makes. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. Um, for Cheeto Vera, I always feel like he looks better over five rounds, and I, I wrote this down yesterday. Um, I mean, I watched the the majority of his of his fights yesterday, and I wrote down doesn't mind losing until he wins. Um, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. <clears throat> the bad thing is that if you start losing and you don't get back into the fight, oh, that sounds serious. The problem with that is if you start losing and you don't get back into the fight, then it can get away from you. The good thing is that you can read somebody without overextending yourself too much and let them kind of wear themselves out and then you start to capitalize. And over five rounds, that's far more of a of a potential storyline than it would be over three. Over three rounds, there's there's a pressure that you've gotta you've gotta to get to work because you lose the first round and you have to win the second and third. There's no there's no two ways about it. We saw that in his fight against Pedro Munoz and, and, and he acknowledged the fact that he had to pick the pace up. Um, and then I go back to his his Corey Sandhagen fight, which was a split decision. Some of my favorite cornering that I've heard in in a long, long time was uh, was uh, uh, Coach Perillo in the corner of Cheeto Vera. At the end of the fourth round, he came in and he was like, he tapped him on the chest. He was like, he's like, are you all right? Are, are you okay? Like, like really kind of really kind of appealing to the person within Marlon Vera at the time. He's like, are, are you okay? And then he went, you're really starting to bomb me out, man. And it was just like the choice of words, like the way that he kind of, that it would have made Cheeto feel was like, oh yeah, no, you're right. Like I should be doing something more. Like That was a fight where he struggled to get into it once it had started to slip away from him. And you know, that's that's entirely in credit to Corey Sandhagen and the way that he moves, the, the style of fighting that he that he presents. The striking, the switching of stance, the movement, the challenging of different ranges and different levels, and then throwing the wrestling in there as well was really something that put Vera on the back foot and kind of kept him there. And that was what what made him struggle to get into the fight. And that was over five rounds. But generally, he looks better, I think, as the fight goes on. Like the Dominic Cruz fight, for example, you know, he allowed Dominic Cruz, I mean, he allowed <laughs> it. Dominic Cruz spent the first couple of rounds moving around and stinging and kind of doing what Dominic Cruz does, like being dynamic and being unpredictable and, you know, testing range and then bouncing out and doing a little skip and then, you know, the, the Dominic Cruz way. 
in that fight, you could see Cheeto was just kind of gradually, okay, let me march him down, let me march him down, let me see what he's doing, and not quite engage, and do you know what I mean? Like, it was a, it, it was a gradual process of him building into that fight, and the reason why I like this style for Vera over five rounds is because he can do the same thing for O'Malley without without risking himself too much in the first couple of rounds. Like For me, Cheeto needs to drag this fight out for as long as he can, and he needs to slowly do damage to the base of O'Malley so he can take away that movement. But he's got to be he's got to be cautious getting drawn in and uh, starting to scrap because what Sean O'Malley is very good at is bouncing out of range and countering, just like we saw with uh, with Al Jermaine Sterling. He's very good at measuring distance and the perfect kind of opponent for, for O'Malley. Although you know, I'm sure he would have liked to have put him away, like properly put him away. Was uh, the kid with the green hair, Martino? Martino? Is that right? I think it is. Um, that that kind of opponent with without the the nuance in the footwork that kind of just marches forward like he's like he's like permanently pissed off is ideal for O'Malley because O'Malley's very good at kind of sniping and bouncing and if the person's always moving towards you and and quite predictable that allows him to use that that head movement to bounce and slide off at different angles and then punish like there were a few times where Martino would would crash forward with a shot into the line of O'Malley where O'Malley was and then the next thing he's missed and O'Malley's at this angle hitting him with with a couple of different shots and then he's gone again so like with those kind of opponents that have that hard-headed I'm going to get to you eventually because I'm determined enough O'Malley can toy with them guys even if he can't necessarily put them away every time he can he can pick them off and he can make them look very amateurish Cheeto needs to employ footwork but he also needs to employ patience because if he if he doesn't have patience then he won't have the right footwork he'll start to get a little overzealous now if you look at what Cheeto was able to do to Dominic Cruz as he was rolling out predicted his head was going to be there put him on the end of a foot same thing with Frankie Edgar he started to recognize he was dipping as as a you know as a defensive tactic as Cheeto was moving into range like earlier in the fight with Cheeto and Frankie Edgar you'll notice that Cheeto starts to throw like a skip knee and a, or, or a knee up the center line. And it's because he's already recognized that there's that danger for Frankie Edgar every time he dips his head into that pocket. So he starts to try and exploit it with one weapon, decides it's not working, changes tactic and uses the front kick. It was, it was perfect. But the point is, with that steady pressure up against somebody, he can see where their head's going to go, whether it's peels off to one side, peels off to the other, dips into the center pocket. Then he can choose his weapon as to how to put the person on the end of that technique. O'Malley does have great footwork, but if he's squeezed up against the fence and he's forced to make a decision, it's 50-50, right? A patient Cheeto Vera can test that and test it and see which direction you're going to move. Like, if you go back and watch the Dominic Cruz fight, you can see how he kind of pushes him away from the rear hand to push him onto the kick it's a, a very very clever setup and and a patient Cheeto Vera can be clever and he can play a clever fight over 25 minutes or less doing gradual damage to Sean O'Malley will then take away his footwork as well which will make him less likely to be able to bounce off and escape once you've got him up against the fence however if Cheeto starts to get impatient if he starts to you know you know swing for a home run and miss then he's going to start to get frustrated and O'Malley is the ideal person to to get under his skin can kind of poke and prod at him what I don't think we're going to see is any any kind of wrestling offensive from Sean O'Malley unless he's he's planning on surprising us Cheeto Vera's got good submissions and he always has them to fall back on sometimes a little too willing to fall back on them which is why he he, he has been uh put in bad positions on the floor before but his his ability to to threaten with submissions is um i think it's enough to put Sean O'Malley off let's put it that way um i haven't done tailor the tape ever let me quickly do the tailor the tape so uh, so Sean O'Malley um is slightly taller he's got a 3 inch height advantage 5 foot 11 compared to 5 foot 8 for Vera uh, and a 2 inch reach advantage um he does like to leave his hands down and hang his head out 
like almost tempting his opponent to throw, but that is because he's trying to draw them into his range. He's able to slip out of the pocket and counter, but he doesn't want to slip out too far. And that man management of range is what Sean O'Malley is very good at. This is where Chito Vera needs to take that space away from him because if he allows him to play with that range, he can do that all day. He can cruise and sting. And of course, if his legs are underneath him and he's feeling confident in, in his base, then his movement's going to be even more dynamic and, and difficult to predict. Um, on the other side, Sean O'Malley, he, he can he can absolutely use a good low kick game to start to dismantle Chito Vera's forward movement. It will slow Vera's ability to pressure down. It was it will also slow Vera's ability to plant his feet to throw power punches. Um, if Sean O'Malley does decide he wants to, wants to close range quickly, Chito Vera is not going to be able to move away quite as quickly. He's he's got good defensive movement. He's he's quite smart when he's got his wits about him and he's playing patiently. He's he's very good at kind of reading and moving away and letting his opponent punch air. He did it a few times with Cruz and and. You know, if he can do it with Dominic Cruz and that unpredictability of movement, you, you've got to think he's going to be able to do it um, with Sean O'Malley. Unless O'Malley, of course, does the same thing that Vera can do and take away the the, the, the base. Um, I mean, I, I must talk about it in almost every breakdown, but it really is a key to a lot of these fights, especially if you've got someone like Sean O'Malley who does move a lot, or if you've got someone like Chito Vera who does plant his lead foot to throw power punches. You know, I feel like Vera's got the... The, the the power advantage in this one and I feel like if he does land on O'Malley it's going to look more concussive um, that might be because of the way that Sean O'Malley's built and the way that he kind of rides punches as well though so we, we have to keep that in mind Cheeto might find himself getting outpointed but he still might be winning on the scorecards because he's landing better quality um, whereas Sean O'Malley I think he has, to, he has to have cleaner work he has to get away and not really get countered because if he steps in and peppers with one, two, and then gets caught with one big shot from Cheeto, you you don't know how the judges are reading those exchanges. They they're not necessarily gonna gonna go with the the point scored by Sean O'Malley. They might be going with the damage and the 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 impact from Vera. Um, a quick breakdown of their records. So Sean O'Malley's got twelve knockouts out of seventeen wins. He's also got one rear naked choke on his record. Um, I'm I'm more than open to being surprised. I don't think we're going to see much of Sean O'Malley trying to grapple with Cheeto Vera. Vera is a, a good grappler and a stubborn individual. Um, he's going to be very, very difficult for Sean O'Malley. And, and of course, he's got the surprise factor. A little level change might not be a bad thing, but the variety of submissions on Cheeto Vera's record. So 23 wins on his record, eight by knockout, 10 by submission. So we've got three rear naked chokes, three arm bars, Two triangles, one triangle armbar, and one heel hook. Just dramatic pause there while the rain's pouring. One heel hook. I'll just leave that one there for you for one second to digest. Um, this is why Sean O'Malley, I don't think he's going to tangle with Cheeto Vera because I think Vera will just attack and attack and attack. I think he's going to feel physically stronger, and I feel like he's going to he's going to want to get a hold of the limbs of Sean O'Malley if he can do and start to twist and try and try and snap them this is a this is a sniper in Sean O'Malley moving maintaining space disappearing into into uh, into areas of the octagon that Cheeto Vera hasn't been able to cut off and control and and putting on a masterclass of 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 range play striking Cheeto Vera has got to kind of slowly eat the canvas away at him take away his wheels damage his base best he can, and then start putting his punches together. Um, the the better Cheeto can manage his patience and his and his desire to to hit Sean O'Malley, because you know that's what is, is going on inside him, uh, the better he can make decisions and start to pick off those opportunities to, to, to hit Sean O'Malley. And, you know, if Vera decides he wants to be a little bit reckless into the later rounds, you know, when Sean O'Malley, especially as his base taken away, so he's not as likely to get away. Absolutely, Cheeto can start crashing into range with short range punches, and he might even want to grapple himself. Um, if you put Sean O'Malley on the floor, starts beating up him up there. We know what he did with those couple of three elbows that he landed at the end of their last fight. So um, certainly, I think Cheeto Vera has options to his game, but that makes it very clear where he's got to be cautious of Sean O'Malley as well. Um, 
knockouts I, I did put i did do the knockdown thing uh so 10 knockdowns f uh for cheeto for uh compared to 1211 strikes seven knockdowns for o'malley compared to 787 strikes so that's one knockdown per 100, 112 strikes for o'malley and one for uh, <clears throat> one per 121 for cheeto vera so pretty even really i, I just kind of feel like I just kind of feel like, I, I, I don't know, it's, it's maybe the way that they move, but I feel like Cheeto is going to look like he's more damaging with his shots. You know, they're, they're the, the, the fights, I mean, which fights are coming to mind? The, the fights that, that I remember where Cheeto was getting outworked, he was still looking like he was bullying them a lot of the time because of the way that he was kind of, like I said, he doesn't mind losing until he wins. And I think that that's something really valuable over five rounds because you can afford to kind of give a round or two. Like Aldo, you know, one of the best to ever do it, um, often used to work 20 minutes out of a 25-minute fight. And you could usually pick out which round at the end of it was the one that he took off. Um, that sometimes, you know, if you know you've got a limited amount of energy or if you know that you're a slow starter, you can build that into your game plan. Um and and with five rounds, Cheeto's got the option to do that now. So I think this I think this is better for him over over twenty five minutes. Let me let me put it that way. But I I I have no idea which way this is going to go. O'Malley really impressed me against against Al, uh, Aljo. You know that sharp little drop back counter, beautiful work. And the thing with Sean O'Malley as well is he knows what he's good at, and his his coaches are very progressive in the way that they train you can tell that by the by the, the the looseness of his striking it's very difficult to be as loose as that if you've not been a striker for many many years and uh you know sean started with mma so whatever he's integrating into his game is going to be specific for him because his team is built around him and very specific for the job in front of him and you know they've done their research with vera so i'm, I'm also interested to see what new tricks O'Malley's got ready for Cheeto Vera specifically. Mm, excellent. All right. Enjoy these fights and I'll see you next time.